All right, so let's get started. <clears throat> um, my name is Peter Pokorny, and I'm a developer <clears throat> working uh, uh, at Tyler. Uh, I was lucky that I could uh, start uh, working a little bit and help uh, to migrate uh, uh, or help to fork Mapbox into the open source one fork. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, this project uh, from more from the technical, technical side and uh, uh, the presentation will have uh, kind of two parts. First part is going to focus on simple example, <clears throat> which will show how you can build uh, application with MapLibre native for Android. And the uh, second part uh, will uh, focus more <clears throat> more We'll, we'll focus more on the technical side of the of the project. Let's get into it. Uh, MapLibre GL native is uh, a library written in plus plus fourteen. It's, uh, it's kind of a huge code base. Uh, it's kind of it's it's a bottom up. Uh, approach for the multi-platform application. So the, the core library, which uh, uh, which is written in C++, contains everything from uh, the renderer uh, abstraction on top of OpenGL, um, networking, logging, uh, all these things are written in C++. And on top of it, there are wrappers for, <clears throat> for uh, native platforms. Uh, for example, for iOS, SD, uh, for iOS and Android, but also for, for Qt, for, for Node, and so on. So this is uh, the library which we are going to talk about. Uh, the example I wanted to go here uh, is kind of similar to the, to the example which we uh, introduced in the workshop uh, on Monday. Uh, it's a simple uh, application for Android. I, I selected Android rather than iOS because I think it's more open source. So um, the application just uh, loads, um, just initialize the, the map, the control, and, and then it loads the map style, and then it uh, parses, parses the GeoJSON from the local assets and um, puts it on the map as a as a vector source and vector layer. So it's it's simple application. We don't have much time in this session in this talk, so I'm going to uh, I'm not going to do any any uh, interactive presentation. It will be all just slides. But uh, there is a link at the end of this presentation <clears throat> uh, to GitHub where you can find the source code and also the tutorial. To do this. Uh, in, in order to build the application for Android, uh, you need indeed Android Studio, which is the official development tool from Google. It's built on top of IntelliJ Powerful Editor. It uh, comes with Gradle, which is this uh, building system for, for Android projects. And uh, it comes with all the SDKs for Android devices and emulators and all that. So this is what you want to use when you want to uh, when you need to build project for Android. Um, the application for Android consists from there are typical or basic build, building blocks for Android applications uh, like uh, activities, uh, services, um, background services, and so on. I will focus only on what we will need. So in this example, we will need um, activities. We will write one activity. Uh, you can imagine you can imagine activity as a piece of user interface, the screen basically. On Android, uh, act activity can be launched from uh, from any application. So you, you should think about it as an isolated piece of the of the uh, interface. 
can be used from anywhere. So that's the screen. And uh, what is on the screen is controlled by something which is called layout. Uh, okay, on Android, layouts are typically written uh, using XML files. And uh, they basically organize uh, all the buttons and, and controls and things on the screen. You can, you can, um, when you think about it, it's similar like, for example, flex layout in on web. But there are many, many layouts for Android. Uh, and then, of course, um, there is the library itself, Maplibra SDK, and the application you, which you will write. Uh, there is also something which is called application manifest, and that's um, a list of metadata for your application. For example, marketing name, it contains marketing name, version, and so on. Uh, so to uh, to start, you will just create you will just uh, create a new project in Android Studio. You will choose uh, simple activity template template, and uh, there are some options where, where you can control uh, how you want to be compatible, which devices you want to support, yeah levels. So uh, that's obvious. And uh, then we then uh, second thing which you do when after Android Studio generate your project you will install the SDK. Uh, installing the uh, SDK consists only from uh, editing the two uh, Gradle files. These these files are for the Gradle build system, and and once you will in something there, uh, Android Studio knows that you want to. Use some SDK or some library. So you, here you will just add uh, the repository Maven Central. It's typically there already, so be there. And then you will add the implementation org.maplibrary.gl Android in the latest version. Pretty simple then. And then you will uh, synchronize these changes and uh, you are ready to start developing. Uh, the layout which we will use is very, very simple. It's just a simple constraint layout. Uh, you can see that there is really almost nothing there. Uh, the most important part for us is this uh, mapbox sdk.maps.mapview control. So we are giving it name mapview. We are making it full screen, that's all. Uh, next, uh, we will write source code. Uh, which will define how the application will behave uh, in activities on Android. Uh, you are basically handling uh, the lifecycle events of the of the activities. Each activity has uh, uh, events like uh, on create when they are created, on sleep when they are um, they go into the background, and so on. So. Uh, here at this point, it is important to set up map control and put it on the screen. So we will uh, we will write code for on create event or we'll override basically on create method in the activity. We will read the API key uh, from the manifest. You can see the code for this in the tutorial link presentation. And we will initialize uh, the here we are passing in the API key and we are telling the SDK that we want to use map Tyler. And then we will, uh, on the next line, we will, uh, on Android, they call it inflate the, 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 the layout to the activity. It will basically parse the XML document and it will put the controls from the out to the activity, to the screen. And then we will create a, the map view. So we will we will get the reference to the control uh, and uh, uh, this these uh, two lines or one line here is required by the SDK. And uh, then we will uh, get the reference to the uh, to the map. 
we will set the style. So this is the line which uh, is loading uh, streets base map uh, into the map view control. And we will uh, uh, set the camera position to point to um, Buenos Aires in level 10. You, you, you might notice that uh, here is a bunch of callbacks uh, in kernels so that we are not blocking UI, UI thread. Uh, it's common common way out to do things on Android so that the application keeps responsive. Uh, so that's standard stuff which anybody will do if uh, would like to use uh, up the branch DK. Next thing uh, I'm going to talk is uh, how to add GeoJSON from the local uh, file on the device. It will be bundled in assets. Uh, so we will use something which is called uh, async task on Android, but I just encapsulate everything in, in a single class so that it's uh, to understand. So the, uh, this uh, this line basically use that class, create the async task, and then execute it. The async task is uh, is a way on Android. Uh, there's many ways how to do that, but one of, one of the way is to use async task to to execute uh, asynchronous code on the background. Um, so. Uh, we are using here a class which is called GeoJSON Loader. This is our custom class. It is uh, um, base class for this is async task with some generic uh, generic arguments, um, which are specifying what are the data the task is writing on. And then we are uh, implementing two methods. One is in background and second is on post execute. First method will be run on worker worker thread, and uh, we will we will implement here the code for uh, reading the, the GeoJSON from local file, parsing it, creating a feature collection, and then there is on post execute method, which uh, the uh, operating system Android operating system will run on uh, UI thread. And in this method, we will implement code for adding the actual layer and source to the map. Uh, now, you can notice here that there is weak reference uh, uh, here, uh, the weak reference type. It is a reference which is not protected from being garbage collected. Uh, because on Android, uh, when the user rotates the screen or when the application goes, uh, in background, or there is a memory pressure, the operating system can dispose the activity. And uh, since we will be uh, we will be running some code in background on the worker thread, uh, when when we will go back and we will need, will need to access the uh, activity again, it might be disposed. And the weak reference is a way to uh, be able to check if the uh, was disposed or not, basically this line here. So that, that's the skeleton for for the uh, class, which will help us to read the GeoJSON <coughs> from local assets. And then the rest is easy. We will just uh, open the stream from from uh, assets on the on the device, and then we will we will use Kotlin uh, uh, and the library there to read read the data, uh, parse it, and once we will have the feature collection, we can uh, add the source to the style uh, and add the layer, which will uh, link back to the source and and will tell uh, to the zk how to how to render uh, the geometries from this source. And and that's it. the The application is pretty simple. It just shows basic map and on top of it there are uh, uh, there are just polylines uh, rendered on top of it generally as a class. So that's uh, that's uh, uh, 
for illustration how you can build application using this SDK. And now let's let's talk a little bit more about the uh, SDK itself. So the the, the code. Uh, uh, Petr Petr Přidal already talked about the motivation of this project and how it happened. Uh, uh, you needed to do the open source fork and so on. So from the technical point of view, uh, Mapbox had uh, three repositories on GitHub. Uh, one was with the native library, and then there were there were two repositories: one with iOS and one with Android uh, uh, implement SDKs. What we did, we merged these three into the single repository. Uh, we uh, implemented CI, uh, CD stuff uh, using GitHub Actions. <clears throat> uh, and we uh, um, updated uh, some things like a uh, compatible version for iOS, so that it is now using the last version of the Clan compiler. Um, we removed uh, the telemetry. Uh, we removed uh, the hard-coded configuration and replaced it with API, where you can um, uh, allows you to configure the backend tile server uh, and and choose which one you want to use. And uh, uh, we also. Uh, make it possible to distribute the binaries through C framework on iOS and and uh, we are using Maven Central Android packages. We also uh, we also migrated uh, several Android plugins, uh, which were for a while uh, for uh, for another bindings like React and, and so on. So uh, these are the uh, more like infrastructure changes. And uh, one thing which is uh, still underway, I mentioned already, is uh, make it um, implement the support for, uh, for Metal on iOS devices. Uh, to, sum to, to summarize the differences between MapLibre and Mapbox, uh, indeed, uh, MapLibre has a source license. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Metal on iOS support for it is underway. Uh, MapLibre doesn't have all the latest 3D maps, it, although it can render um, RGB terrain and, and hill shape and all that, but uh, not, not the 3D. And, uh, it doesn't support all the latest uh, additions to the style specification, and there is no uh, tracking telemetry. So this this is kind of one slight summer, summary. Uh, what's the difference? Related information you can uh, to learn more about uh, MapLibre. If you can visit maplibre.org, you can find. Uh, documentation site on MapTailer, where you can find uh, samples for Android, iOS uh, specifically. And there is a GeoJSON sample, which you might want to check out if you if you would like to implement something similar what I presented here. And uh, uh, all these tutorials has links to GitHub, where you can download the source code and you can run it on your your development environment. There is also a um, project called uh, Awesome Map Libre, which is uh, uh, which uh, tries to collect uh, all the interesting projects related to uh, Libre.org. So check it out. There are additional interesting information. Most important thing from my side, uh, just big thanks to all people who worked on this uh, handy library. Uh, countless hours, definitely, if you will check uh, commit history. So big thanks to Mapbox developers, and uh, big thanks to all the contributors who helped 
um, to the project uh, since we since we made the work. I compiled this list uh, 14 days ago, so if somebody stepped in in, in the between, I apologize. Uh, but again, for for helping on the yeah. So that's all what I wanted uh, to talk about. Feel free to make some noise in the chat if you have a question. And, and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Peter, for the for the presentation. We have one question that I see: Are there any apps on Play Store or App Store using Maplibre today or coming soon? Yeah, good question. Um, there, there are applications which are using uh, map SDK. Uh, map Tyler has uh, four applications, uh, two for iOS and two for Android. Open Map Tiles and Map Tire Mobile. Those applications are free, so you can download download these application and and look around and play with play with those. Uh, but I also know about other developers who are using uh, Mapper already in their application. Thank you. Uh, second question, what is the purpose of the API key when initiating your project? Uh, so you can configure uh, and tell to the SDK which uh, server you want to use. Um, for getting the maps and styles and uh, clips and all this, and uh, we we put into the SDK um, for uh, for uh, options now, but it's open and can be added. And right now there is Mapbox, uh, Maplibre, um, uh, Map Tyler, actually three. And uh, map Libre doesn't need any key. There is one map which you can use, this the simple map, kind of political map. And uh, map box and uh, map Libre, uh, map, map box and uh, map Tyler needs a key. Uh, you you don't have to uh, you don't have to initialize it like this way. You can just slow the map from URL and you can embed the key if it is needed by the server. Oh. Okay, thank you. And one more question. Is it possible to support offline vector tiles on the device storage? Yeah, it's possible. Uh, Mapbox uh, implemented uh, the line caching. Uh, so that's one option. You can just, uh, can just uh, use it. Uh, and this, this solution basically makes it possible to cache all assets which comes from the from the server, so not only the vector tiles, but also styles, uh, waves, rides, and uh, and vector tiles, indeed. And the uh, second option is to use, uh, it's called file source, uh, MB tiles file source, which allows you to um, put vector tiles in, in MB tiles format on the device, and then create the tiles from this file straight from the device. Okay, thank you. I'm checking for last questions, last ideas. Um, I think that was it. So thank you very much for your time, for your presentation, and I hope you have a great Phosphor G 2021. So. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh for giving us the chance to talk about it here. It's a great example. Uh, so thank you. And in a few minutes, we'll come back with our last presentation for this uh, for this session.